Howdy everyone, welcome back to Zeman Outdoors. Today, I'm gonna to go through how I sharpen the Magnus Black Hornet. I just did a video on how to do the Magnus Stinger. This is gonna be pretty similar, but we're gonna be using the black jig from the Stay Sharp group. Again, you'll need a Phillips and a flathead screwdriver, a flat working surface of some sort. I have 320, 400, and 1000 grit sandpaper. I have a leather strop and some green compound. I'll put the link of these in the description below. This is a fairly simple process. It can be time consuming when you first start sharpening your broadheads, but once you have them sharp and you're just touching them up, it's pretty quick and seamless. Magnus broadheads out of the box are already pretty sharp as is but you wanna make sure you get them touched up and nice and sharp because the sharper the broadhead, the more lethal and quick and ethical of a kill you're going to make. So let's go ahead and get started sharpening this broadhead. To sharpen your black hornet, you're gonna take the screw out that's right there. So we'll go ahead and use our Phillips screwdriver and pull that out. Be careful not to lose this. Next, to pull off the main blade, all you're going to have to do is pull this off like that. And then you can see there's kind of a little piece right there. Sometimes it comes off real easy. Sometimes you kind of have to just pull it off a little bit. And you pull that off. See that small piece? Set that aside next to your screw. Don't lose it. And then you'll want to pop the bleeder off. I just like to kind of push the opposite direction and you can pull that off just like that. So we're going to start by sharpening our main blade. Like I mentioned we're going to be using the Stay Sharp system and it's their black Stay Sharp. I don't know the exact name of it. I'll put a link in the description like I mentioned. You should always start by doing the serrations first if you have serrations. So you want this sticking out about a quarter inch to five sixteenths. I don't think you really need to be exact as long as you're consistent with your spacing here. And you want it to be as straight as possible. That's what I'm trying to get. So sometimes I'll set it on the table and you can kind of see and make sure that all the, your edges are touching the table nicely there. So now we'll take our flat head and we will tighten this up. So you can see we've got about a quarter inch to five sixteenths of an inch out there. So to do the serrations first, we're gonna take a Sharpie and I'm just gonna mark the serrations in here. And this gives you an idea once you've cleaned them up all nicely, there should be no Sharpie remaining inside the serrations. Next, you kind of have two options. As in, I showed you my other video, I just made this little device with a string on it and I put some green compound. You'll just slide it kind of like this to clean it up. And you'll see the Sharpie starting to get removed. So that's one option. But if you don't have the ability to make that, you can use another option. Just take a piece of cereal box, or in this case, Velveeta mac and cheese. And you'll put some green compound on the edge and fold it over what you'll do is you'll just slide it through just like that until so you'll do that for all the serrations. You'll want to do this till you get all the Sharpie off and you can really see that it's polishing up nicely. And on this, don't forget you're only going in a downward direction. You don't want to go up. If you're using the other thing, you'll cut your string. If you're using this, you'll just cut through the cardboard. Next, you'll want to take your Sharpie and mark the entire bevel with Sharpie. The reason you're doing this is to make sure you have the right angle all the way across your blade. On this, you can do a back and forth motion. So you wanna look at your Sharpie and you can kinda of see that it's coming off evenly, so I should have the blade in there correctly. And you'll just continue doing that till all of your Sharpie is gone and you'll be able to see a good smooth surface. And you'll want to do about 10 to 20 strokes on one side and then flip over to the next side and do the same thing. 
So once you feel you've done enough on the 320 grit, you'll switch over to the 400. So on this 400 grit, you're still applying, you know, medium-ish pressure. And then the last, you know, 10 to 15 strokes on each side, I lighten my pressure where I'm barely putting any pressure on it. It's always good to have a towel or cloth or something by because you get a lot of little shavings coming off on it. So now we'll switch to the 1000 grit. And here you're going to use very light pressure. So while working on this 1000 grit, you should definitely start to notice your broadhead polishing up a little bit. Once you are good with the 1000 grit, you can kind of see it's already getting nice and polished. You'll want to bring your leather strop in. I'm going to add a little bit more green compound. To do this, I like to kind of get it a little warm and, and melt the edge. It just seems to go on a little bit better. With the leather strop, you only want to pull back. You don't want to go forward with your broadhead. You'll cut into the leather and screw up the strop. I'll also put a link for the leather strop and the green compound that I bought on Amazon in the description below. I'll usually do about 10 on each side and do that two or three times. And again, you're using light pressure. So after doing that, you can see you've got a nice mirrored finish. And it should be razor sharp. You can see all the hair that it's pulling off. So I'm going to switch this to the side that does not have the serrations and repeat the same steps. And you'll end up doing this for all four sides. Again, you'll want about five sixteenths of an inch hanging out. And you want to make sure you're nice and straight across it so that you have a good angle on your bevel. You want to get some Sharpie on it. 320 grit. So I'll do about 10 strokes and then wipe it off and you can kind of see the line. It looks like it's a pretty good angle so we should be good to continue. We'll switch to the 400 grit. Switch to the 3000, sorry, the 1000. So you should have a good mirror finish there, but we'll go ahead and clean it up some more on the strop. Again, working backwards only. So you should have a very nice mirrored finish there. Now we'll flip and do the other two sides of the blade and then we'll go on to the bleeders. For the bleeder blade, you'll kind of do the same thing. You'll put your bleeder blade in about a quarter inch up there. These you want to make sure you get pretty snug because they will move on you with them being as small as they are. And then you'll pretty much just follow the same process. We'll switch to the 400 grit. Switch to the 1000. Again, you're only pulling backwards on this. Don't go forwards and very light pressure. So not sure if you can see how good that looks there. But that's pretty much a mirror finish. So next you'll flip to the other side and do the same thing. As you can see, I've got both sides now a mirrored finish. So you'll repeat the same thing on the other two sides. So once you have all four sides of your bleeder blade done, you can take it off. Go ahead and put your black hornet back together. So take your bleeder blade, 
the cut side there goes up on this. You want to make sure you push that bleeder blade all the way against the back wall there. Once you have your bleeder in, you have to take this little piece here, put it back in, and then you take your freshly sharpened main blade and you'll just slide it on like that till your hole lines up there. And then you take your screw, put it back in, and tighten it down. So you can see how the mirror finish looks on this blade now. And I'll show you one that I have not done yet. So you can tell it's still pretty sharp. And you have a decent finish out of the box. But when you compare the two, you can tell this one has a much better finish and will be much sharper. As always, thanks for joining. Hope you enjoyed this video.